Hey you guys, it's Amy Gretchen. Welcome back to another tutorial. In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can take your stamps and create digital stamps from them. Now, I thought about whether or not this is an ethical thing to do, and I've done a little bit of research, because uh, this is something that I've wanted to share with you for a long time, because I've, back in the day when I was really big into stamping, I would take my rubber stamps and I would create them into digital stamps and use them on various things. And so um, I thought that it would be a useful tool to be able to show you guys, but I also wanted to make sure that it was ethical and that I wasn't overstepping my bounds and doing something wrong. And after doing a little bit of research, what I understood is as, um, as long as I'm using or you're using your stamps um, for yourself and for your own projects, then it's totally fine to be able to do. So just keep that in mind um, when you're doing this, that you definitely stay within the rules based on the products that you are purchasing. So with that said, that's my little disclaimer, um, let's get started and I want to show you how to create this. Now I'm going to show you how to do it in Photoshop and I'm going to make a digital stamp um, from these stamps, but you can also um, make a, uh, you can also do a live trace in Illustrator, which would allow you to have these stamps be vector images instead of pixel based images. And so you could make them as large as you want. So these um, these stamps that I'm going to make are only going to be able to go get so big before it gets fuzzy and that happens with pixel based but if you want something that you can go really big um, then you'd have to go uh, into Illustrator and do that in Illustrator. It's definitely just an extra step so just keep that in mind. Okay so I want to show you the three ways that I've done this here. So these stamps came from um, a Studio Calico kit. I think these were designed by One Little Bird. And like I said, just keep in mind, as long as we are using these products for our own uses and not trying to resell them or anything like that, this should be fine to do. There's three ways that I brought this in and I want to show you the three ways that you can potentially get in a digital image. So right here I have scanned it. The thing that's really great about scanning is you are able to then um, make it as big as you want. So you can scan it at 300 DPI or you can scan it at 600 or 1200, whatever your scanner allows you to do. And that way you could make um, larger stamps. Um, the other one is I actually stamped these images onto paper and you could do that as well. The one thing that you want to remember with scanning as well in all of these, you want to just get, you definitely want to put on white paper and have it be black ink. So those are the two criteria that you're looking for that's going to help you the best. Um, you can see how clean and crisp this is. This is actually the plastic that comes with the stamps. I just took off the stamps and then I did a scan of it. You can see there's a, I don't know if this is fiber or what happened. Um, it's not 100% awesome, but that might be something that you're looking for as well. You might not want this. You might want it to look a little bit more stamped. So you have that ability as well. The next image that I wanted to show you, so this is the plastic image. And when I took all the stamps off it, it kind of warped it a little bit, which is why I taped it down. And then I took a picture. The problem is you can see I should have taped the entire thing down because I'm getting a little bit of shadowing and this this is going to make it more complicated when I'm trying to separate the blacks and the whites. So keep that in mind. This would probably be my first choice because it's definitely the easiest. I took this with my phone and then I took this with my phone as well. Um, but because it was warping, uh, it made it really challenging. So if I were to do it again, I would really just put tape all the way around the edge and make sure that it was laying flat. So anyways, those are just some options. If I definitely wanted to be, for it to be clear and crisp, I definitely do the scanning. The other thing that I will say, like I said, I did this with um, rubber stamps and I was trying to look for my original rubber stamps that I used, you know, I, of my scan and I couldn't find it, but 
I just did this where I um, had a white just text piece of paper and then I stamped right onto that. Uh, and then I just did it this way. I think I actually scanned it in because we didn't have our phones or anything like that. Um, so yeah, I just ended up scanning that in. So those are the three ways that you can do that. You can easily just take it right off your phone, email it to yourself, or if you are on a Mac, you can do an airdrop or however it is that you get photos onto your computer. That's how I did that here. I think I ended up emailing these to myself. And then of course the scan came right into my computer. So we're going to start with probably the easiest one, which is this one, because uh, there's not a lot going on. I mean, it's really black and white. So how I really want to go about separating the black and white is um, my my levels. So I'm going to come to adjustments here in this panel. If you do not have adjustments showing because you have an older version of uh, Photoshop or maybe Photoshop Elements doesn't call it that, I'm not entirely sure, you can come to Windows and look for adjustments there. Like I said, if you don't have that panel for whatever reason, I think this has been around since uh, Photoshop CS4 though, if I remember right, um, you can click on this levels. But like I said, if you don't have it, just hit control L and it will bring up the levels, uh, the levels panel here. So right here on our input levels, we've got our black side and our white side. So this is kind of a histogram showing how many whites and how many blacks or how many whites and how many blacks are in, in this uh, file. So if one of the things that I've done before is I've taken, this is black, a dropper, gray dropper, and a white dropper. So wherever I take this white dropper and I click on it, it's going to make that white. And if I do the same for the black, it's going to make that really black. So it's doing this adjustment for me. Um, I'm gonna click on Alt or Option, and I'm just gonna reset that. So I want you to know that you can also do it yourself and you can tailor it. I really want, you see when I'm moving this back and forth, you can see that those letters are getting a little bit thicker. So I may not want it to be so thick and I definitely don't wanna bring out all that black around the edges there. So I'm gonna just bring it back where I think it looks uh, pretty good. And then I'm just gonna hit okay. So that I will leave it there. Now there's a, a few little pieces here and I definitely wanna get rid of that. One thing that you can do is, um, looking for my eraser tool, here and I'm just going to, I'm gonna hit the plus or maybe it's control plus. You can see when I make it bigger how the pixels are standing out. Um, okay, so what I don't wanna do here, I'm gonna to go to history and I wanna make sure on my brush that it is a hard brush. So I'm gonna make it 100% because I don't want it to affect that box at all. And then I'm gonna get that line right there that kind of came out. I'm gonna hit the left bracket and then I'm gonna get it there. And I'm just gonna clean it up a little bit because I'm seeing some marks. I'm hitting the, the shift key that's giving me this hand that's helping me move around um, this layer. And I'm just getting some of the stuff that um, random stuff that came over. Okay, that looks good because I'm I am going to put them on um, a separate their separate area. So you can get as picky as you want to get. I can see a little bit of stuff here. Um, like I said, I'm not going to get too picky. Okay, so I'm just going to hit Control minus or um, Command minus on a Mac, and I'm going to just bring it back out. And like I said, I see that there's some stuff here that I could erase, but I am going to cut around each stamp or each, yeah, each image. So I'm not going to worry about that now. So now I'm going to click on the next one and I'll show you how to do it on the next one. So I'm going to hit command or control L. You could come to the adjustments panel and this is levels right here. 
and I'm just going to bring this in and I'm just going to get as white as I can, as black as I can, looking the way that I want. Now keep in mind, um, you can end up cleaning some of this up if you want. Um, I'm going to get a little bit bigger. Right here, you can clean up this edge if you want. This might be something that you're interested in. Maybe you want it to look a little bit more rustic. Maybe you want uh, your stamp to look like it's been stamped instead of perfect where this, um, I'm gonna hit okay, this over here, you know, it looks a little more perfect than um, this. So maybe you want it to look a little bit more rustic like that. So that's just an option there for you. Um, I'm not going to worry about this on the edge because, uh, you know, like I said, I'm just going to cut around this and let me just show you if you wanted, I'm going to get my eraser tool and you can see that I, I don't want to go so far and I'm not really awesome with the eraser tool, but you can come in and you can begin to make this bigger i'm doing bracket key to make it bigger um and like i said i'm not really awesome with it so i don't really get it straight so in this situation i would probably just leave it um, as is i might want to clean this up a little bit um, but that's why i say when you're doing this it makes it um I'm just control Zing when I do something. Is that even a thing? Control Zing. I'm just hitting Control or Command Z to back up. Photoshop allows you to back up once. So um, you can see that you could go around and fix it the best that you know you want. Um, hitting Shift to get this. The, the thing that I want to do the most if I don't want to have to go through and clean all this up is make sure that I get the cleanest image possible. So if I was going to use this image, then I like if this was what I did and this is what I scanned in, I would definitely just plan on having it look rustic like this. And I think that's totally fine. Um, I think I would want to clean up a little bit of this you know, that I did here, but I think these edges are fine. That doesn't bother me um, if that's the look you're going for. The next one, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm hitting Controller Command L, and then I'm just gonna make this white, and I'm gonna make this more black. So I wanted to show you what happens here. Um, I wanna be able to see this black, and I want to show you that I'm getting this shadow here. And you know, right here, it doesn't look like it'd be too hard to erase, but definitely right here, it's just, it's in the way. And like I said, you wanna get the best possible image that you can so that you don't have to worry about having to clean this up in the end. So I just wanted to show you those three options. This is definitely easier up front, a little bit harder on the back end. Um, and then here's this one. I'm going to control or command minus so you can see that. And then this one with the scan. So definitely a lot easier with the scan. I am going to, now I'm going to just focus on this one. And how I'm going to isolate it is uh, I'm just going to get the marquee tool or you can hit M. And I'm just going to, um, Let's see, control click over it and put this box of marching ants over it and I'm gonna hit control or command C to copy it. And then I'm gonna go to a new file and I think I'll just do, um, let's just do a letter size. So whatever that is for you. And then I'm gonna hit control V or command V and you can see that it pasted it right in there. So I'm gonna just make it a little bit bigger um, that looks like it's still pretty good. So it's not looking fuzzy to me at all. And now that I have this, that it's isolated, I'm going to come up to edit and I'm going to come up to br uh, define brush preset and I'm going to click on that. And now it's going to ask me to name it and I'm just going to hit real life and then I'll click okay. 
Now, if I come up to, let's see, I'm gonna go to Windows and to Brush. If your brush palette isn't showing, you can do that, click on it. And here's my brushes palette. And let's see, let, to, in order to activate this, we have to make sure that our brushes on our tools is on. So I'm just make sure that's selected. And you can see I have my brush here. Let's get a different color. Whoops, let's get a different color. So we can see how now this digital brush works. Isn't that awesome? It's really cool. So um, the digital brush is right here and I can make it smaller or bigger and I can try making it really big. Let's see. Um, I'm hitting my bracket key to make this a lot smaller and then control minus to back up and you can see now I made a digital stamp that is as big as this three and a half or eight and a half by 11. So this is a letter size piece of paper that we're working with. All right, so I'm gonna take this layer and I'm just gonna delete this layer and then I'm gonna do a new layer. Now that we've done that, I'm gonna come back to our selection tool or V and let's go back to here. I'm gonna get the marquee tool, which is M and we're gonna do the next one. Control C, go over to this new um, layer I guess it's just a new file, control V, and I wanna make it a little bit bigger. I don't think you have to, but I want to. Just make that a little bit bigger. So I'm making that a little bit bigger by hitting control T. I'm sorry, I didn't explain that. I'm hitting controller command T, and then this box, that's the free transform uh, tool, this box, if I hit, if I just um, move it around like this, it's going to change um, the dimensions of it, it's gonna change how it looks. I'm gonna control Z out of that. But if I hold down the shift, it's going to constrain the dimensions. But keep in mind, if you are on, I believe the Photoshop elements, then you don't have to hold down a shift with Photoshop elements, but um, I definitely will have to do that. So I'm gonna just make it a little bit smaller, click okay. Now I'm gonna go to edit. Define a brush preset and I'll say making things happen. That's what I want to call it. And I'll click OK. Just move that out of the way. Now I'm going to come down to my brushes and you can see now it's showing up in my brushes panel. And I can begin a bracket key to make it bigger. I can begin to use this as a stamp. So that's, it's just a really great option. Okay, now let's do it one more time. Maybe uh, and I'll make sure that I actually say everything that I'm going to do. So let's just go back to the marquee tool or you can click on M. I'm gonna hit Control D to get rid of that selection and I'm gonna make another selection here by, um, I'll do Control D. So what I'm doing is I'm um, clicking and dragging. So I'm getting this selection and then I'm hitting Control or Command C going over to our new file and hitting Control or Command V. And you see that it's showing up. Now I'm gonna go back to the selection tool or you could hit V. And then I'm just going to hit Control T or Command T, hold the shift and pull it out like that. And I'll make it that big. Move this off to the side. I'll go to Edit, Define Brush Preset. I'll say anything is possible and then I will click OK. And let's go, let's go to brushes or B. And then you can see here's my new stamp. And I'm stamping. And I'll make it big. Okay, so that's just, it's just a really, this is a really great option. So one thing that I will show you, um, just hold on one minute, I'm gonna grab a photo for you. Um, if I can find my pictures. Okay, so I'll just grab this one of me because it's the first one I saw. And it's small. So, you, well, it's not too bad, but um, I'll make it a little bit smaller. 
Okay, now that I have this uh, photo in here, let me show you how you can put a digital stamp on top. So I wanted, really what I wanna do is show you like an application of why do you want your stamps digital? I mean, you could definitely make them into uh, your own three by four cards, or you could make a pattern, but you're thinking, you know, why don't I just stamp the pattern onto the three by four card, which you could totally do, which is why you're buying the stamp in the first place. But what if you don't have the right color, or what if you want the stamp to be bigger, and um, you know, you want it to be able to go on an eight and a half by 11, or on a large photo, and you wanna make it bigger. Um, also other options are maybe you want to color coordinate with this photo and you haven't been able to do that. So, um, you don't have the right ink for that. So this is just like a real world application. I just want to show you, um, how to do that. So what you want to do is let's pick the, um, stamp that we want and maybe I'll click on this making things happen and, um, I definitely want my, so I've got black and white here and I definitely want my color to, let's say I want it to coordinate with this photo and I could, let's see, I'm going to go to the dropper tool and let's say I'm going to find kind of like a um, ivy color or something like that. So then I will come up back up to the brush tool and um, I'm going to make this a little bit smaller by doing the bracket keys and then I will click down. Now that's fine, it doesn't look that great, it's really hard to see. So what I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna do one other thing, which is I think a really good practice. So you can see that I've brought in this photo right on top of this layer here. Actually it is on its own layer, which is awesome. But I want my brush to be on its own layer as well. That's just a really good habit to get into so that if you wanted to do any, make any changes to the brush, you could, um, and you won't affect the photo. So I'm just gonna control Z, and I'm gonna come down here and hit a new layer, and I'm gonna take off this layer so we don't have anything going on in the background. And um, I'm going to make sure this new layer is highlighted, and then I'm gonna do my stamping on this new layer. So if I need to change anything or erase anything, it's not going to affect the photo. And now I'm gonna get the dropper tool and let's say I wanna coordinate and um, a little bit better. And I'm just going to move it around until I find the color that I want. I'm looking here or you could look up here as well if you've got the color panel open. If you want it open and you don't, you can go to windows and come down to color and you can bring that up. Now I'm gonna come back to the brush and pick the one I want. And let's do this one anything as possible this time. And remember, if it's not the right size, you can do the left and right brackets or you can change it here. I think it's a lot easier to use the left and right brackets. Now I'm just going to click down and you can see there is, um, there's my stamp. And the other thing that's really great about this is you are able to come down to the opacity and I can make the opacity lighter. Um, I can change it to normal to multiply. Um, I could change it to lighten. That's going to totally take it away. Um, but I want you to know that you can mess with the blending modes as well if that's something that you wanted to do. And you can change the opacity because it's on its own layer. If I were to do that with it being right on the photo, it would affect the photo as well. So that's why that's just a really good habit to get into. Okay, so just one other thing that I want to show you before I'm done with this tutorial and another reason why it's really great to um, do your stamping onto another layer. And that's um, if I want to, what if I want to take the box off of this stamp? Then I'm able to do that without affecting anything that's underneath it. So I'm gonna come over to my eraser tool or I could just hit E on my keyboard. And I wanna come up to um, the top where it's got just, I want just a regular circle here. And I think what's really cool is in the eraser tool that you're able to access the stamps that you made as well. So just something to keep in mind. Uh, make sure that you're on the layer that has your stamp. Come up to, I want a hard brush. So if it's not a hard brush, you can make sure to just make it 100%. And then I'm gonna come over to my stamp and I'm just gonna start erasing off the box. I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger with the bracket um, 
bracket key just to make it go um, a little bit quicker. So you can see that I just went ahead and erased that box and then um, and then I can have the words without the box. So really the sky's the limit with the way that you can play with these stamps. Uh, if I wanted, I could also do like, uh, let's see, why can't I see it? I don't want an inner shadow. I want a drop shadow and I couldn't see it. Oh, it's at the very bottom. Um, if I wanted, I could do a drop shadow and you can see if I make it um, really obvious here. Um, you can see all the possibilities that you can have just by making uh, your stamps digital. All right, you guys, so now if I have my photo or my print the exact way that I want, then I can just go ahead and print it and put it right into my project life. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take off the effects or the drop shadow effects by clicking on that. And if I wanted to bring back um, the square, I could just go up to my history panel and then I can just go all the way back, just keep clicking back until I get uh, the box uh, the box back. So you can do that uh, in your history panel. So you guys, this is the tutorial. I hope you guys were able to learn something new. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. And if you would like to see more tutorials from me, don't forget to subscribe so you can get updated. All right, you guys, we will catch you in the next video. Bye.